Hello, my uh, name is René N, and I'm a professor of uh, neuroscience and psychiatry at Columbia University. My lab has been interested in the previous years in uh, defining how memories are stored in the brain. And in particular, we have been interested in what we call a memory trace, which is ensembles of neurons or connections where the memory is supposedly stored. So we have in particular been interested in one part of the brain called the hippocampus, where, which is important for contextual and episodic memories. So what we have been doing is develop a novel transgenic model to allow us to basically tag these memory traces and see how various conditions uh, change them. What you are seeing on this slide is a blow up of the hippocampus, where you see three regions. On the lower left, the dentate gyrus, which is where information is coming into the hippocampus from the cortex. And this is where sensory information entering the hippocampus is disambiguated, a process that's often referred to as pattern separation, which allows us basically, when we encode novel information, to disambiguate novel information from stored familiar information. The next station on the right is the CA3 pyramidal layer, which is where information from the dentate gyrus is sent and where a process of pattern completion is taking place. Pattern completion is, if you want, the opposite of pattern separation in the sense where that process allows you to retrieve memories only when partial uh, reminders of that memory are presented to you. So this transgenic mouse model is based on the immediate early gene that you saw in the previous slide. So what we took advantage of is the fact that the ARC gene is expressed transiently when animals experience uh, a novel experience. So what we did is link the ARC promoter to an inducible recombinase and bred the resulting mice with mice that have a reporter, which is in that case a yellow fluorescent protein, YFP, that is uh, preceded by a stop sequence. In the example that I'm showing you here, animals are trained in a particular context where they receive a food shock. And basically, all the cells corresponding to that experience, that contextual fear experience, are going to be tagged by the yellow fluorescent protein. Then, a week later, or a month later, you can come back to that context and now look at which cells are reactivated upon exposure to that same context or to a similar context. And what we have proposed is that the cells that are reactivated when the animal is re-exposed to the same context are basically what constitutes the memory trace. Hi, my name is Christine Andeni and I'm an assistant professor of psychiatry at Columbia University. In the line that Renee just described to you, we explored how memory traces are impacted by three factors, time, experience, and adult hippocampal neurogenesis. By using contextual fear conditioning, we found that the dentate gyrus and CA3 contain memory traces for a fear-inducing context. Over time, memories generalize and these memories become less dependent and localized in CA3. And surprisingly, although adult hippocampal neurogenesis occurs exclusively in the dentate gyrus, it modulates the strength of the memory in CA3. These data begin to elucidate the mechanisms by which time, context, and adult hippocampal neurogenesis impact learning. To determine whether the cells labeled during contextual fear conditioning are necessary for the behavioral expression of contextual fear, our creo 2 2 mice were bred with the optogenetic inhibitory line ARCH-GFP mice. We optogenetically inhibited dentate gyrus or CA3 cells that were active and thus labeled with ARCH during contextual fear conditioning coding in order to dissect the distinct requirements of these hippocampal subregions on subsequent memory expression. We show that dentate gyrus and CA3 cells that were recruited during encoding of a contextual fear memory are necessary for expression of the corresponding memory. Inhibition of these cells impacts expression of the fearful memory. Importantly though, we also show that inhibiting dentate gyrus or CA3 cells that were recruited during encoding 
of a different contextual memory has no impact on the expression of a fearful memory. These experiments suggest that the DG and CA3 neurons that were active during encoding of a memory are necessary for the expression of that corresponding memory. In summary, these ARCREARG2 mice have allowed us to identify components of the memory trace in the dentate gyrus and in CA3. They have also allowed us to study the impact of various environmental factors on these traces as well as how they evolve over time. And such studies will hopefully be helpful in the future in order to characterize the deteriorations of memory that often accompany normal aging and age-related disorders.